A scathing new report by volunteer charity WRVS says the UK lags behind other countries in its care of the elderly. It's a challenge that has already defeated many, of course, as the number of older people steadily grows. We are living longer, on average six years longer than in the 1980s. Since 1985, the number of people over the age of 85 has more than doubled to 1.4 million. In another 25 years, it is forecast to reach 3.6 million. 60% of people over the age of 70 experience acute loneliness. 300,000 British pensioners say they go an entire month without speaking to family or neighbours. The Royal Borough has one of the highest rates of loan pensioners in London since the 1990s. In 2008, it was estimated that 6 out of 10 pensioners live alone in the borough. Psychologist and psychotherapist Dr Elizabeth Meekins spoke to us via Skype regarding these issues. It's interesting because about 20 years ago I worked in North Ken under the West Bay in social services. Yeah. And yes, I remember there was a predominantly elderly population even then on our case books. But it's changed so much. You know, you, I really noticed how much the kind of socioeconomic changes are affecting people profoundly. Um, I'll give you a small illustration of that. There's um, in a disguised, in a disguised, to protect her identity details. There's a woman who I'm seeing three times a week at the moment who just says, in the most harrowing terms, her framework's gone. Um, her sons live abroad. There's no community in the post office to gather and talk to. The little work that she did have before she retired has gone. She's she, she's unbearably alone in her own home because there are no more the structures around her which. The, the day centre she to pop into is closed down, that type of thing. Um, so obviously that's having a huge impact on a very large number of people. Isolation affects all socio-economic backgrounds regardless of wealth, education, religion or gender. Isolation is the number one fear for older people, a greater concern than finance or health. Old age is now longer and more solitary than ever. Britain is facing a demographic time bomb and it's time to put all the talks of funding back into action. Isolation is the biggest problem facing our growing older population today, not just in England, but um, everywhere in the West, because the whole family structure has broken down. And what used to exist 100 years ago, where children lo would look after their parents, doesn't exist anymore. And so people are very isolated. And actually, it's been pr proven that with isolation, people get sick. And, they, and, and not only are these perceived illnesses that happen, but there are actually real illnesses that happen from dementia to Alzheimer's to high blood pressure. In December 2010, the University of Chicago published an article about Chicago psychologist John Cassioppo. He wrote a book about loneliness, about how the need for social connection is so fundamental in humans that without it we fall apart, down to the cellular level. Well, I think depression, um, undoubtedly depression. Um, sometimes I think suicidal ideation. Um, this particular person talks repeatedly about wanting to take her own life because of not feeling useful, not feeling that she's got a part in the world around her any longer. I think that, I mean, Freud said that there was a huge battle in all of us between what he called eros and thanatos, life and death. And I think that most of us managed to negotiate that by being busy. You know, we have work, we have relationships. And when those crumble, that profound disquiet, which can visit us at any time, is then a dominant mood for many people without those um, networks. Um, and it's partly age, inevitably, with retirement and people dying who have been around, and the reminder of, you know, getting to the end of your life. It's also, um, there are no longer the cohesive structures offered by the state that used to be more there. Tahira, age 63, who is a resident in the Royal Borough, has experienced loneliness and social isolation. Tahira moved to the UK in the early 90s with her children. She had come to a new society with a new language to learn and didn't know anyone. She still doesn't feel comfortable with speaking English and it affects her confidence in socialising. <laughs> But as you saw, I had to English. I had to speak 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 English. I had to speak
بودو که انگلیسی یاد گرفتم جس بیرو میرفتم سودای خودم میاردم و کار خودم میکنم با خاطر که اولادم مصروف درس و کار خود بودن برای بسار سخت بود در خانه تنها ماندم تنهایی بسار سخت است برای هر کس که تنها باشه و از امون خاطر من چیز پیدا کردم که ای آیت فرمشی پیدا کردم که هر چیزی آدم میرفت من افکت که زیادتر Even my, my lovely dear mother, my father died recently and I'm seeing her at the weekend and she said, um, it's come, you know, she said, you don't have to come over and give me elderly succor. You know, there was a sense of, I said, mum, you're my mum, I'm not coming over. But there, I think culturally people who are isolated and living alone and elderly feel that they're now become a burden, yeah. which is tragic, yeah. you know. The Second Half of Your Life Foundation has been established with the purpose of tackling loneliness and isolation by building and creating centres throughout the UK with the first being in the NHS St. Charles Centre for Health and Wellbeing in North Kensington in October 2012. Using the five components of successful ageing, as detailed in Child's book, the foundation will tackle isolation and loneliness for any person over the age of 50. So if we can tackle isolation by creating a beautiful place where people can come and learn new skills, but also, you know, share hobbies that they love to do, and also, you know, be able to learn about computers and how to relate to each other using 21st century technology, then I think we've really achieved something. I think if it becomes a socially acceptable way of doing those two vital things, keeping our minds alive and our bodies alive and healthy and thriving, then wonderful, but it would have to become normative. But I think absolutely those kinds of centers, and hopefully people could generate that themselves. But what does the doctor make joy about second half center yeah and i'm so glad but as my raft muja khor khanda bar khod paida kadam life is so better and uh, i have friends uh, to talk to tahira takes part in many classes at the second half center which helps her physically and mentally she has made many new friends and just after two months of being a member she has been asked if she wanted to teach an international cooking class which tahira accepted this has brought her confidence a long way in just a few months. That's what we want to do here. We want people to make connections through passions that they either have or had and are rediscovering, and then really enjoy the second half of their life and get to do the things that maybe they haven't, they weren't able to do in the first half of their life. It's trying for me. It's drawing on all the resources in the community and trying to keep up to date with what there is out there. Mm. Um, so that people can begin to, to use their own networking capacity. The NHS has their five a day, but I have my five a day. And those five a day are, one, to have a passion. The second one is purpose. And purpose is to have a purpose. And purpose are things that we do for other people. The third is um, to exercise. And exercise is really important because exercise is like a two for one. One is that it makes your your muscles strong so that you have the vitality to do the, all the things that you need to do in the second half of your life. But it's also been proven to improve the synapses in your brain and how your brain functions. The fourth is nutrition. And then the fifth, as I mentioned, is staying connected to friends, family, and your community. I came here with my sister after we met Jill at an open age event in Kensington. And we, did a, we do a few classes here, which we look forward to. Okay. Whether it's raining, snowing, whatever, we come out to these classes. It's ever so good. I do salsa on a Monday. Tuesday, I do zumba and meditation. Thursday, it's yoga. And Friday, believe it or not, is beginner's computer. <laughs> I started pretty much when it opened and the members seem to really enjoy it uh, and value what we do for them here. Um, I enjoy it very much. They already come with really positive energy, so, you know, it's half the work done, really. My life is the same. Where I was before going to the second off centre. Every day I wake up, I just clean the house, wash the dishes. I feel the centre is a marvellous place to come to because before this I wasn't doing anything until I found it, or till it found me. We have all the art classes, um, so drawing and painting. We have all the crafting in here. It helps you express your inner idiot. Most of us have a lot of idiocy within us and we want to get that out. And um, I am here to help that happen. <laughs> 
For information on how to become a member, please call 0208 962 5500 or visit www.thesecondhalfcenter.com.